Welcome to the Kayla Ambrose Show. I'm your host and your travel guide to the other side, Kayla Ambrose. Welcome back for another episode. And in today's talk, I'm going to be answering another Ask Kayla question. This question is, Kayla, I know you see auras around people, and you've also mentioned that you see them around places and things. You write in some of your books that you touch buildings and sense the aura in buildings, and that you see the aura in every city and state that you visit or tune into. And the answer to that is absolutely I do. I help clients that are looking to move, whether they're moving their company or they're moving personally. Um, I help them find the best places for them to move to according to the energy of that place. If it's on an upward trajectory, if things are moving more positive, if the aura of that city or state is upwardly mobile, if it's going to get better, or if it's descending, if it's decreasing in energy, if the aura is not looking as good. Everything has cycles, so it's not good or bad in that sense. It's that we have cycles. If you look back at your lifetime, there were cycles of time when you were on fire, you were, everything was great, you were winning at everything, and then there's other years, not so much, not as great of a cycle. Everything in life changes, everything has cycles. What goes up, goes down. What is down doesn't stay there forever, it goes back up as well. So, I was asked in this Ask Kayla question to give a report about the 50 states in the U.S., where is each state on an upward or downward cycle, meaning where are the best places to live? Now, I did not research these states, meaning uh, researching what's the most expensive, you know, what their prices are, what the crime is like, all the things you're looking for when you look to move to a city. I am just tuning in to each state. I just made a list of the states. And I tuned into each state and area to see where I felt energy gaining momentum, the aura of that area getting brighter, or I felt it losing momentum, like the energy draining from that area, not as doing as well at the time. So with that in mind, please keep that in mind, that if I mention an area you love or that you happen to be living in, and I say it's on the decline, it doesn't mean it's a bad place. I'm just saying right now, currently, the area is not as strong energetically. Its aura is on a downward uh, trajectory at this time. And as all things in cycles, it'll come back up again eventually. But this is helpful to a lot of people who are looking to move or find somewhere new to live or um, want to move their company to somewhere where the good energy is on a high, so it's going to help them make more money or to live their best life. And again, with these lists, let me say that I did not rank them in any order. So if it's the first one I list, list that doesn't mean it's number one, It unless I say so. But on most of these lists, I just went in alphabetical order by the states and grouped them into their appropriate lists. I know I'm doing a lot of explaining here, but I'm hoping not to get a lot of angry comments later from people saying, how dare you talk about my city or state and say it's not the best right now. So I'm just trying to explain. It's just what I'm seeing right now. Nor is this just hear this and go move there either. Do your research. Look at things that are important to you. Cost of housing, crime rates, um, whether you can remote work or not, or what the, you know, what housing and jobs are like in the area. I feel a place coming up, and that means it could take five to ten years before that place is really at a good place. A lot of my clients want to know this because they'd rather move there now, buy a property while it's low, invest, get there, and watch their nest egg grow. So sometimes I'm telling people about places that if you looked at it today, you're like, well, that's not ideal. Well, that's the point. <laughs> if you've If you're looking for ideal... You've, you've lost, whether you're investing in the stock market, investing in real estate, investing in anything. If you look at, if you want the peak of something of the best, you're going to pay a high price for that. 
So if that's what you're looking for, I will be listing some of the best places to live right now, but they're going to be more expensive too. So keep that in mind. These um, marks, sometimes people look for the ones that are low so they can buy low and wait for that next cycle. Okay, hopefully I've explained this well. All right, I'm going to start with the states uh, that are on the decline. Again, in alphabetical order. So the first one is Alaska. And let me say I love Alaska. I lived there before. I've lived in a lot of states um, in this country. So nothing to do with my personal feelings. I love Alaska. I love the state. It's on the decline, though. Energetically, uh, not feeling a lot of good things going on there. Not with housing, not with work not with crime. Um, the aura I see is kind of just a, a sagging, saggy energy. Um, nothing to really lift it is what I see energetically. If you're there and you're like, okay, I'm here. I have to be here. Where's the best city in, in the state? Maybe where I should live. I would say Eagle River. Eagle River feels really good to me and kind of holds its energy and is more of a brighter light. It's a city there compared to the others. So I think that would be the most um, solid, uh, secure and comforting city to be in Alaska's Eagle River. Next up is Arizona. Uh, Arizona's definitely on the decline. There's, there's a, where Alaska was a saggy energy droopy, Arizona is almost like a whoosh, like a flushing sound, like all the energy just being flushed out, like a, a, one of those fast coming rainstorms that all of a sudden it's just a deluge of water flushing everything out. So definitely on the decline. Even Sedona, some of you would write and say, what about Sedona? It's such spiritual. Sedona has been sucked dry. So many people going there and just trying to suck all the good energy out of it. They literally have been like little energy vampires and have sucked Sedona dry. It's going to take Sedona a long time to recover from, from all that. California. California? No. California in a rough shape. The, the energy there, the aura, there's nothing there promising right now. Anyone who has any intuition, uh, investors, CEOs, corporations, they know to get out. There's... California's on the decline, a long decline before it hits a rock bottom and bounces back. Long decline. I can't tell you a city to go to. Not the the bigger the city, the worst. L.A., San Francisco, San Jose, all of them on a long decline. Nevada is next on the decline. If you had to live somewhere in Nevada, uh, I would say Reno or outside of Reno. Um, in a little town called Sparks. That would probably be where I would send you to there. Uh, California, I'm trying to think of a city I would send you to. And I just, I really can't think of one right now. If something comes to me, I'll say later. But New York, New York, same as California. On a steep, steep decline. Not even close to hitting rock bottom. A lot further to go. It's kind of in a free fall. And... I mean the city and the state as well. If I had to live anywhere in the state, it would probably be Albany. But that's only if I had to. What I recommend to any client is move, leave New York. The energy is in such a decline that it's going to be hard to make money there for a long time and to go. Same with California and New York, leave. Uh, next up is Oregon. Oregon is a, a, on a decline too. And it's like a sharp, how I see that decline is it's fast and sharp. So there's not a lot of warning leading up to it. It's like if you have a sharp knife and you're cutting off a, a big slice of cheddar and it's just a sharp cut at an angle, that's what it feels like. It's going to come hard and fast and be a sharp drop, a sharp cut. And Oregon's really going to feel the pain. If, if I lived there and I had to stay in the state, where would I go to live? It would be Salem or Corvallis. Next up for states on the decline, Virginia. Virginia is going to pay the price of just the proximity to D.C. And everything that's going on in D.C. and how that energy 
is just raging and it's catching Virginia's catching all the energy from that. So it's on a decline for that reason. And if I had to live there to get out of that toxic energy, I would go to uh, Lorton or Bonaire, both for affordability and just to kind of back away a little bit out of that area from the DC energy. So DC, not really a state, but we'll just consider it wrapped up into Virginia as well. Um, on a decline energetically, for sure. Doesn't mean people still don't move there or that housing is high. People have to live there to work, obviously. So there's always going to be that. But energetically, it's on a steep decline. Next up for states in a decline is Washington State. Um, Seattle's trending down. It's a slower move. It's more sludgy. Um, think about oatmeal. If you had a real thick bowl of oatmeal and you turned it on its side and a little bit dropped out and then but it's so thick another little bit drops out and then maybe a good sized chunk but it's just slow going like that that's how it's um decreasing in seattle it's kind of chunk by chunk it's trending down spokane on the, on the other side of washington has been in a, in a decline for a long time and it's actually starting to cycle up a little bit. It's got a ways to go, but it is cycling up. If I was a remote worker, didn't matter where I lived in Washington, but I wanted to live there because I needed to be somewhat close to Seattle for work or I just like the area, I would live in Pullman or I would live in Bainbridge Island. Those two would be the most nourishing and sustainable. Okay, so while compiling this list, I wanted to list every one of the states because you might be thinking about moving there and you, you don't want to know just the best or the worst. You kind of want to know where it's ranking overall. And again, these are my rankings. This is not from any other list or based on anything to do with prices, crime, or any of those things. Check for yourself. This is just how it feels energetically. All right, so next up, I'd like to list the states that are neutral, meaning I don't feel a lot of energy emanating from them they kind of are where they are. If you live there, it's more of the same. And if you know anything about it, it's pretty much still at that energy level as well. There's not been a lot of change or movement in the aura or the energy of that location. First up is Arkansas. And Arkansas feels about the same. I'm not seeing a lot of changes in the energy there. If I had to pick a city has the best energy, to possibly thrive in, I would say Fayetteville. Next up on the neutral list, again going in alphabetical order, is Connecticut. And if I had to pick a city there that I think might be the best energetically at the moment, I would say New Haven. Onward we have Delaware. For Delaware, I would say North Star and Rehoboth Beach, that they're still holding the energy pretty well. Next up is Hawaii, and I would say Kahala, which is um, the outskirts of Honolulu, or Lahaina or Wailea. Both of those are in Maui. In Illinois, still on our neutral list, Buffalo Grove or Naperville. Especially if you're a remote worker, then you can live in these smaller towns, like a lot of people are looking to do now and be close enough to a city or an airport that when you need to go in and do things, you can, but you can enjoy a quieter, peaceful, safer lifestyle. Next up in the neutral list is Indiana. Town I would pick is Carmel. Again, great for remote work, but not too far away from Indianapolis when you need to get to things. Iowa is next, and Des Moines, I think, still feels Probably the best to thrive there. Next up, we're looking at Kentucky. I like Lexington there and Wilmore. And Maryland, the two I like are Columbia. And if you, if you need to be close to D.C., then Burtonsville. Next up is Massachusetts. And I always, I 
I know I'm not going to get a name right here. I, I um, struggle with some names. But I want to say Waltham. W-A-L-T-H-A-M. I'm going to call it Waltham. But I'm sure someone's going to write it and correct me. But if you have to be near Boston, that's where I would go. And if you don't have to be near Boston, then I would go to Provincetown. In Minnesota, again, another neutral state right now, I would go to Deep Haven. In Missouri, it's Wildwood for me. In New Hampshire, it's Portsmouth. And in New Jersey, it's Concordia for peace and quiet. And I also like Bergenfield. In New Mexico, it's Los Alamos. And in North Dakota, I really think Jamestown might be a place to check out. Again, especially if you're a remote worker. In Ohio, it's Cincinnati. And in Pennsylvania, it's Pittsburgh. I love Pittsburgh. <laughs> I've been through there on several book tours and just love the city. So it's still on my neutral list right now. I didn't feel a lot of things happening, but I could see this, this uh, city moving in the future into an up and coming. I think there are some eyes I feel looking at it, considering what they might do there. So there may be some new companies looking to do something in that area. So I'd keep my eye on it. Utah, the place I feel, Park City. Super expensive though. In Vermont, I like Essex and I like Colchester. In West Virginia, it's kind of three in one. Morganton, Star City, and Brookhaven. They're all really close together. So it's just that area of West Virginia that I'm, that I'm seeing, like a little bright light there. In Wisconsin, it's Madison and Sturgeon Bay. And in Wyoming, it's Cheyenne and South Park. But I feel like a lot of cities are doing well in Wyoming. It's neutral, but it's that's kind of how Wyoming is, the energy. They don't want to be too much of anything. And they kind of hold that steady neutral. Being a neutral isn't bad. It's, you know, Switzerland's neutral. Being neutral can be a great thing. It just means you're holding your own where you're at and that potentially you're comfortable where you're at. And I feel that a lot about Wyoming. Before I get to the best of the best, the next level on my list I'm going to call on the rise. These are ones I sometimes will mention to my clients. Say, look into these, possibly get in on these before they're hot. By the time they're hot, you miss that if you're looking to buy real estate before it goes up. So these are some that I'll mention in that way. And of course, do your own research to find out what you're looking for. If you are investing or call me, if you're looking specifically to move, I can look at your astrology information that actually can tell you best places to invest and live and look at other information for you intuitively to help you make decisions for things like this. Okay, so my list of places on the rise. Again, in no order but alphabetical. First up, Idaho. I like Boise and Sun Valley. Second is Kansas, Overland Park, and Leewood. Now, I say Lee, maybe it's Leah Wood, L-E-A Wood. But both those areas, I see lights twinkling over them. Next up, Louisiana. Now, in Louisiana specifically, it's the Lafayette area. And there's some really small towns there that I think if you want to invest in now that are going to, to boom uh, in the future. Not boom like major city boom, but... If you're in Louisiana and you're looking to own some property and you can get it really cheap and you're wondering, can I make money on this investment, rent this house out, uh, sell it in the future and make some money? These are some little towns, I think, where you could invest and make that kind of money coming up. So if you're interested in the Lafayette area, there's a little town called Scott. And I think uh, that's a good investment. Or even if you wanted to live there, like you're a remote worker because there's not going to be a lot of work for you there. But if you're a remote worker, um, great place called Scott. Another one is Youngsville. Again, that's in Lafayette Parish. So in uh, in the Lafayette area, as I feel, is the brightest light energy up and coming in Louisiana. Uh, New Orleans always, there's an attraction there in light. Um, I think, you know, a lot of people go to Metairie. But I'm saying Mandeville for New Orleans right now. 
if you want to be close to New Orleans and and um, wonder where the energy is trending upwards, Mandeville. Also a place never thought I would put on this list, but it's right outside Lake Charles, which usually is not a destination. And, uh, but it's, you know, where it is proximity. There's some things happening around it, close to Texas and other places that are going to be lifting that energy. So it's an area next to Lake Charles called Prien Lake, P-R-I-E-N. And I get the feeling they're going to be building some subdivisions. Like there's builders looking to put some really nice homes on that lake and out in that area and kind of raising up a more upscale community there. So I'd be looking into that, into the property for sale around there. Energy-wise, I think there's some investment opportunities there around pre and Lake. And again, with, with uh, other homes and things over in Scott and Youngsville and Lafayette area, places to look. In Maine, it's Portland. Maine is definitely uh, on an up-and-coming trend. In Michigan, Grand Rapids has been uh, building up for quite a while. And you may have missed the mark with real estate. It may have already gone too high there. But it's an area that's still looking to grow in Michigan. And the area that is starting to slowly come around, I say slowly, it's going to be a long way. But Detroit is circling back and starting to, to gain some interest and some energy. So if you're in Michigan, that's something you're like, I wouldn't mind owning some property, holding on to it to see. It is time where you could look at Detroit, maybe find something there that's that you're willing to hold on, but probably for another 10 years before you really see anything out of it. 10 to 20, really. But if the price is right and you want to hold on, you could have something there. Uh, Mississippi, there's a little town called Petal, just like a flower petal, P-E-T-A-L. And I think it's on the rise. Uh, also, Tupelo. It's not been a lot going on with Tupelo. But I feel um, energy rising there. And I, again, I feel the, I call it the eyes of a company. I feel the eyes of several companies looking at Tupelo and saying, why haven't we put one of our headquarters here? It's cheap and there's a labor force. Uh, why aren't we doing that? So I feel like there's a, a business or two of a good size looking to do something around Tupelo. Okay, well, you've heard the ones on the decline, the states that are neutral, the states that are on the rise. And now we're going to go for the best, the ones that have the best aura, best energy, best of all of that, where you really can thrive, where you're looking to live well, invest well, find a great job. These are the places where I'm seeing the best energy in the country. Okay, so for the best, I have eight listed. Those are the ones that came to me. Couldn't squeeze out a top 10. I felt eight. These, instead of being in alphabetical order, they are in order of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and what I think are the best of the best. So number one, best place to in invest in right now, look at property, move, work if you can remote work, um, is Huntsville, Alabama. And Alabama in general, to buy property, to look at investing anywhere in the state there. But Huntsville is going to get bigger. I feel it's already has a lot of you know military um, and contracts and things like that. But I think more are, getting, are coming, as well as some other corporations that are going to piggyback on it. And it's going to be a real hub from for that type of work. So if you're wanting to buy, get in now and buy before prices shoot up when more and more workers get transferred there. Also, a little city called Fairhope, which is on the Gulf Shores there. Now, I haven't listed a lot of coastal towns in my list, only because... I'm not feeling a lot of good energy around any of them right now because of coastal flooding that I feel that's coming and increased hurricane activity and storms. So the energy is very frantic and frantic 
around any of coastal cities. So I am not as seeing those as a high energy. But if you don't mind dealing with the flooding and you want a little vacation place, Fairhope is a great place to, to look for something like that. Great energy going there. All right, number two, the great state of Texas. And really, pick a city. Pick a city. They're all going to serve you well. The entire state of Texas is lit up right now. It, it's almost impossible not to make money in Texas. Almost impossible not to do well there right now. Of course, Austin is the place. Austin is where everybody's going. And I mean everyone. So if you have the money and the wherewithal and you want to go where everything is just going to take you to an amazing experience, go to Austin. The other big cities, Dallas and Houston, um, they're, they're doing great, but they're neutral. Their energy is not flaring up like Austin. But they're both great. And any of any other city you can think of Texas, I have a hard time thinking of one right now that's not doing well. So if you feel the call to Texas, it's it's uh, it's on the up. Number three is Florida. Florida also is a bright light right now. Thousands of people are moving in by the day. They can barely keep up with demand in Florida. Because of this. Some areas that I would have listed as the best cities um, to go to. I won't right now because they're um, under siege right now. For so many people moving in, they can't handle it. And so I see some problems coming where they're not going to be able to have workers who can afford to live in the area. And that creates kind of a depressing vibe because you need both. You need a mixture of all types of people. And all those people need to be able to live and exist and coexist to make a vibrant community. And when you get so expensive that you can't take care of those other people, the whole city suffers. So the areas I see that haven't done that yet and that are holding on are Naples and Sarasota. And both of those are on the Gulf Coast. If you want to go further inland because you want to save money, you'd like to have a little bit more property, a little bit more land, looking for something kind of midway in Florida, Lakeland is one that's really looking promising right now. Now, I will tell you, I feel Florida has peaked, meaning it's been at the best of list for quite a while, and it's hit the peak, which means it's now starting its decline. And... When the housing market boom ends, it's going to be felt very hard here in Florida. It's going to be, <clears throat> I think it's going to be devastating for a lot of people. As well, when the next major hurricane starts hitting here and people see the flooding and the damage that comes with that um, and how that affects insurance, there's going to be a lot of flight out of Florida to realize this is, this is, Coastal flooding, hurricanes is no joke. So it's too late to invest in Florida, um, to look for something to go up. It's at its peak. But if you like the weather, you like the energy, you like the lifestyle, I would suggest going to Naples or Sarasota over Tampa Bay or Boca or Miami or any of those places. Number four is Colorado, and there's a lot of cute towns in Colorado. Um, again, Colorado is getting close to peaking. It had a, such an influx of people moving in from California and the other Western states. If you notice, you look back at these lists, there's a lot of movement from the West Coast, people moving inward. It's like people intuitively can tell. They can feel the energy draining out of all of the West Coast all the way up to Alaska, all the way down to San Diego. And all that West Coast energy is draining. So they're all moving inward. They moved into Arizona, Colorado, Utah. They keep, they're bringing that draining energy and they're moving it in. 
Um, in Colorado, the best good sized city is Colorado Springs right now. There's a lot of other cuter, smaller cities too, though, that are uh, just as fun. Number five, North Carolina. North Carolina um, is on its way up to peaking. It was an up and coming, and now it's at a best. So it's about to hit a peak. And Asheville is hot, hot, hot. And so are the prices. It's really on fire right now. Uh, Raleigh Durham is going up with prices, but you can still get in there and find something. It holds its own because there's a lot of work there and there's a lot of space. You could go outside Raleigh Durham into the smaller cities, Cary, Apex, Holly Springs, Fuquay, Verena. It keeps spiraling out and you can still be close enough to get to things that you need there. So it's got a way to go. If you're looking to invest in North Carolina, in some places you wouldn't have thought before, one of my picks is gonna be Hickory. I think there's gonna be some manufacturing coming back to the US where we're tired of um, these global supply problems. And North Carolina used to be a really big state for manufacturing and Hickory was one of those areas. And I think some companies might decide it's time to go back and bring some business and some work back to those areas like Hickory. So might look around there and think about watch that for investing. Next up is number six, Tennessee and Nashville. It's hot, hot, hot. Nashville and Nashville, they're hot. Everyone's moving there. Great place, really bright light, excellent place to go right now. If you want to get in somewhere before it's as hot as Nashville and you want to get to Tennessee, then go to Knoxville on the other side. Go into the mountains there. Knoxville's going to be discovered and end up uh, growing as well, where Asheville is one type of city. Uh, Knoxville is kind of on the other side of that. So they'll be interested people who like to vacation one type or another that don't want to go to one or either of those cities. Number seven, South Carolina. Charleston, doing some good things right now really peaking at its best. But for me, the area I'd like to get into in South Carolina is Greenville on the other side in the mountains, but really building something interesting there with technology, with a lot of intelligence there. I see a lot of energy sparking over Greenville, uh, a great investment place for property where Asheville and the surrounding areas have gotten way too expensive Greenville gives you a lot of the same environment, the same beautiful views of the mountains, and much less expensive. So Greenville's really one to look at. Myrtle Beach is changing too. And if you're into looking into something for the long run, you may be able to scoop something in on Myrtle Beach, give it time to change. It's going to try to become a little different than what Myrtle Beach has always been known as and to try to go more upscale, more like what North Myrtle is. It's going to try to bring more of that in. That's a long investment, but there could be something there. And number eight is Georgia. Savannah is, is on the up, heading up. They haven't quite peaked yet, but they're heading into a new highest and best for them. While Atlanta is neutral and dipping down a little bit. So stay out of Atlanta, go to Savannah for that one. And that's my top eight. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it to give you some food for thought. If you're thinking of moving, living somewhere. I really enjoyed this Ask Kayla question. I love when you write in or when students send these to me and things they want to know. Because uh, I love doing this. I love looking at the energy, seeing the colors and the energy around each state and where its trajectory is going. And before you know it, yours might be on the best list and they all cycle around. So there are some that I put on this list I haven't seen going up in a long, long time. And it's fascinating to watch. So who would have thought 
not too long ago, we'd be talking about New York and California like this. You just never know. And that's because the only constant in life is change. So you can wait for things to happen or you can tune in and listen to people like me who see future trends and we do forecasting for meaning for the future ahead of time where you can get in on things before they happen and make the most of it. If you'd like more information about my work, my books, private consultations, classes with me, all of that, you can find on my website, exploreyourspirit.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. I'll be back next week.